And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Welcome to Sounds of Revival, a program and teaching ministry calling for the church to hear and respond to the sounds of revival, which are calling us back to our first love and back to our place of holiness and dominion in the earth. Sounds of Revival is brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center, located here in the city of Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street, where the pastor and founder is Bishop Perry E. Jackson. And now, Sounds of Revival. God bless you today and welcome to our program, Sounds of Revival, brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center. Well, we're here today just to, we're on a mission, we're on an assignment to uh, speak to the hearts of God's people, what God wants us to know. And you know, it's very important that we be attentive to the words of God because various things are being said in the world today. People have different opinions, but you know, when God has something to say, you know you're going to hear something right because God, he has, he is the spirit of truth, amen. Remember what the Bible said in the book of um, St. John chapter um, 13, he talks about the fact that um, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he heareth, that will he speak, and he will show you things to come. And prior to going into the word today, I want to remind you also just that um, it's important that we understand that even certain little things that God might bring to our attention are, are important. For example, the name of our program is, is, is entitled um, Sounds of Revival. And that is um, a particular importance to God because revival needs to be brought to the church of God at large worldwide. God's people, we need to be revived. Remember what the Bible said in the book of Revelation chapter 2, verse number 4, he said, Jesus Christ talking to one of the seven churches of Asia, he said, I have somewhat against you because you left your first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do your first works. And then if you follow his message to each of the seven churches of Asia, talking about Jesus speaking, each of them, he told them that they had something that they needed to repent of that they need to be revived. On one occasion, he told one of the churches, he said, thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Glory to God. So a dead church already. And look, Jesus hadn't, the resurrection and Pentecost had just been just a few days after that. It hadn't even been 50 years. It hadn't even been 20 years. Church um, going back when it should be going forward. So what we're saying here, when Jesus Christ uh, addressed the seven churches of Asia, if you read that in Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3, he was speaking of um, revival issues, speaking of some serious things that have crept into the church and that they needed to get right, to be revived, come back to the first love, come back to their first standing in him, that they might be able to um, accomplish the mission that God had given to them. So that's important, this thing about revival. It's very important because we can see today, you can look at the news, look at um, so many things, look at TV, look at things that happen around you, and the church world is not the light that it used to be. Amen. So we need to get back to God. Then the United States can get back to God. But the reason that the United States has fallen because the church has fallen. And all the um, uh, mess and all the um, uh, horrific things, gun shootings in, church, in, um, in our schools, so many things happening in the United States. Um, how, what door was open? The Bible did say in the book of Ephesians, the glory to God, said this. It said that um, neither give place to the devil. What does that mean? A door was open. And so whatever happened, whatever horrific, terrible thing which are happening in the world today, even in the United States, the church had to open the door for it. Satan had to come through the door that the church opened. So if we want a, want a better United States, then we have to have a better church. If we want a, a country that's right, we have to have a church that's right. Sometimes people don't consider that because they're too busy pointing the finger at the White House, the crack house, 
uh, the black house and uh, whatever kind of house. The, actually, the finger goes to the church house. Amen. Check your Bible out. Anything that, uh, that's demonic and that is, it is um, horrific and that has been has this tragedies that came upon on nations of the world that were supposed to be God's people, then the door was open for them to come in through the church because the Bible said in the book of Isaiah chapter 54, verse number 17, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Talking to God's people, God's country, glory to God. But then, now just go back in the Bible history. Every time enemies came against God's people, and God's people, God was supposed to have their back. God was supposed to be protecting them. But the reason many times when God's people went to battle, they lost the battle. Satan came in, ran over them like a Mack truck, bulldozed them, glory to God, leveled them to the ground, destroyed them. Why? Because they had let their guard down. They were up in the natural, but they were not up in the spiritual. Their spiritual guard was down. So all the tragic things that came in and that happened and the and people that died and so many other things, took people, people dying and starving, it all happened because God's people decided that they had a better idea. They opened the door for the catastrophic thing that took place. And the same thing, I'm just trying to lay a foundation here, the same many catastrophic things, the division in the um, United States, oh my goodness, it's terrible, glory to God. People getting on TV just blatantly lying and blatantly putting on one another, cursing one another, why? The division in the United States. Why is there division in the United States? Because there's divide, divide, it had to start in the church. And when the church got divided, it opened the door for any and everything else to come in. So church, we must come up to uh, another level. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse number 19, that so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory to the rising of the sun, that when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Satan had come in like a flood against this country, against the church, and God wants to lift up a standard against him. What's that standard? It's a standard of holiness. Isaiah chapter 35, verse number 8, the Bible said this, a highway shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Oh, yes, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Hallelujah. There's no fear of God today. Just do what you want to do. Amen. But there's got, fear's got to come back. We've got to understand we're dealing with a holy God. And a holy God, again, has a standard. Isaiah 59, again, verse number 19, when the spirit, when the enemy should come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And that standard today, God's saying, get back to revival, get back to your first love, and come back quick, because you don't have time. You don't have much time. A window of opportunity is being opened to the United States to repent and come back together. And let me re reiterate something. When I talk about the United States, I'm not talking about sinner folks. I'm not talking about, you know, what, how we point the world. This. No, I'm talking about the saints. Because if the saints don't repent, there's not a chance in the world for the um, unsaved folks to repent. Amen. Look throughout your Bible. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, God placed the responsibility of the world upon the shoulder of his people. If the world was going to be successful, if the world was going to be without, without um, um, sin, if the world was going to be without tragedy, if the world was going to be without starvation, if the world was going to be without um, a horrible thing happening, then the church had to stand up and be the watchmen. Glory to God. They had to, hallelujah, be what God called them to be. So I, I just keep going this way. The Holy Spirit lead me this way. The reason the United States isn't what it's supposed to be and the reason that the United States ain't what it used to be because the church ain't part of my vernacular, part of my English, but the church ain't what it used to be. Hallelujah. So when the church rises up, when the church comes back home, come back to God, just like that prodigal Son, when the church come back home, you're going to see, you're going to see, then there will be no more shootings in the school. There will be no more division in the government. There will be no more um, 
uh, abortion clinics. They're going to shut down abortion clinics. Good God Almighty, when the church gets right, hallelujah. You know, and put that sign down. The church does things so backwards sometimes. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of the abortion clinic. I'm just going to get me a sign. No, you, you, you find yourself a prayer. Get your, find your prayer closet. Hallelujah. First, nothing wrong with the sign, but did you pray first? Hallelujah. Sometimes we say, oh, oh this nation needs help. Everybody needs a vote. Be sure people, people bugging you, calling you on the phone. Be sure to vote. Be sure to vote. People send you mail, clogging up your mailbox. Be sure to vote. Hey, nothing wrong with voting, but did you pray first? Hallelujah. Did you get on your knees and ask Almighty God, who should I vote for? Hey, because the first person you should vote for, Jesus Christ for president. That's who should be the first. And then everybody else coming behind him. Yeah, Jesus Christ for president. How about Jesus Christ for mayor? How about Jesus Christ for head of the city council? Glory to God. Yeah, Jesus Christ for God first, in other words. Hallelujah. Did you pray first before you voted? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, so we, we do stuff backwards, glory to God, because you can, you know, drop everything in the valley and be voting just as backwards as the day is long, because you didn't ask God who he wanted in that position, amen. But again, so let's just kind of get first things first. We're just so stirred up, amen, hallelujah, about but what's happening now in the United States, and I want my candidate to win, I want my, my, hey, let Jesus win. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 33, the Bible says, Seek you first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. But I hope you got that in the spirit. Glory to God. Seek God first. Hallelujah. How, make God a priority in our lives. Amen. Come back to God and start trying, trying to do things yourself. Run, trying to get this country run in your head. It's got to be run from the spirit, the spirit of the living God. Amen. All right, that wasn't even my message for today. I just kind of start off that way. But anyway, the message that we have for today is entitled The Gospel Bus. And prior to going into that little talk, about the gospel bus, I want us to take a look at the chart here. And the Bible did say, to take a look at the chart, the Bible here talks about the fact that we as God's people, or just anybody, you are what you eat. Amen. Now that's again um, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 7. Um, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you are what you eat. Now what we're talking about spiritual food. Remember, the spiritual is more important than the natural. All right, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse number 4, he said, uh, man cannot live by what? Bread alone. In other words, he mean by natural bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So if we're not careful, we will put, again, first things last and last things first. We're majoring and minors and minor and major. Even church people do that. See, if you get the spiritual resolved, then that natural is going to fall into place. Amen. If you get, the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse number 31, if God be for you, who can be against you? But there's a flip side to that also. If God be against you, who can be for you? <laughs> if God decides he's going to be against you, there ain't no doctor that's going to help you. Ain't no millionaire that's going to help you. Ain't no uh, political... Um, um, affiliation is going to help you if God is against you. Amen. So first thing, before you get people for you, make sure God is for you. Again, Romans chapter 8, verse 31, if God be for you, who can be against you? Make sure you're on God's side. Amen. First of all, and then your enemies will fall at your feet. All right. First things first. So therefore, you are what you eat. And also the Bible does say here, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. That's Psalm 103, verse um, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Most of you know that. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who healeth all thy diseases. So see what we're saying here, that you are trichotomous. You are spirit, soul, and body. You are not body, soul, and spirit. Spirit man first, amen, because if that spirit man dies, then everything else is going to die also, just like in the, in the um, Garden of Eden. God told Adam, he said, would you, Adam and Eve, if you mess with this tree, if you touch it, if you eat it, if you eat this of this tree, you're going to die. 
And they said, but what happened? They ate, and they said, wow, this was good. And neither one of them died. They died spiritually. Glory to God. And when they died spiritually, eventually they, they died naturally. So here's, remember what we're saying now, that um, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. First of all, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Put God first and look at all the wonderful things that are going to happen to you. Let, let's go over that again. Psalm 103, verse 2, 3, 4, and 5. Bless the Lord, honor God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, he, who healed all thy diseases, Glory to God, who um, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, so many satisfies your mind. All these good things are going to come when you bless God, when you put God first. Make time out for God. Glory to God. Let God be number one in your life. And let God, again, cause you to be healthy spiritually. Let me tell you something. Because you see, the church today, they are, I'm sorry we have to say this, but, you know, sometimes we can't see ourselves. Jesus helped people to see themselves in the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse number 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Glory to God. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. Remember, he talked about that Laodicean church, one of the seven churches of Asia. Church mean like spirit filled folks, um, church folks, people who go to church and sing out hymn books. And folks, some don't sing out hymn books, they, 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 they just know the songs by heart. People running around the church, clapping their hands. People with tambourines, glory to God. People with preachers standing behind the pulpit, glory to God. Some standing like wooden engines preaching, and some standing with, with the hand behind the ear, whatever your style is. You just got all kinds of stuff going on. You know, just people just being church folks. Hallelujah. But you see, the church, glory to God, he's speaking that the church needs to um, come back to him and that the church has had. Instead of going upward, they've turned backward. Okay, so we're talking about Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. He said um, how the church, he said, you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. In other words, church has um, become down to the extent that they are not where they should be in God. Their soul man, because they, they saw other things rather than God, he said, thou, thou sayest that thou art rich, Still, Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 through 20. Thou sayest that thou art rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So the church needs to see where we are today and just repent, come back to God, and watch they turn around for us. So what we're saying here is that um, you are what you eat, and if you come before God, and get the and, and get download the mind of God, the Bible, download the, the, the word of God, download the love of God in your heart. Psalm one, remember Psalm one, verse um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Glory to God. Psalm one, glory to God, talks about that being that tree planted by the river of water. Glory to God, and so on and so forth. How you going to bless, you'll be blessed if you meditate in the word of God day and night. So again, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Let's start blessing God, people. Amen. Stop. Let's start making a part and making a priority in our life to bless and look to God. Psalm 121, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 talks about the fact, lift up, I will lift up my eyes into the hills. From which cometh my help. My help come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Now, um, we're going to come back to the chart here, but by the way, again, we need spiritual food. We need to make the spiritual our priority, okay? Not the natural. And it's very easy to do that. I've done that myself. Most Christians have. God has to wake us up and say, no, you put in the natural before the spiritual. And that's why things are not working. So just lean and depend on God. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So, so God wants to bless us, and he wants to lift us and take us to another place in him. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to go back to the topic, talking about the gospel bus. And remember years ago when um, the um, people of color, they were saying, you know, I'm tired of, 
I, I, I don't, when I get on the bus, don't put me in the back of the bus because I want to ride, I, I just want to ride in the front of the bus. Well, and I think many, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King, we decided, well, and guess what? We just kept on praying and kept on protesting and finally they said, okay, we're going to let you ride in, in the front of the bus. Word to God. And, but the thing is, riding on the front of the bus is not the most important thing to God. Again, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added to you. I remember uh, watching Dr. Martin Luther King on, on, on uh, you know, videos, how he, he was a man of God. He put first thing first. He put God first. He said, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. That's Matthew. Of course, that's Matthew chapter 5. The Bible talks about verse 44, love your enemies, bless them to curse you, do good to them to hate you, pray for them that despite lose you. That man, he was a praying man, glory to God. I watched those um, videos where they spread him with holes and had police dogs, and that, that man was praying. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't cut, he was praying. Hallelujah, a praying man. So nonetheless, people, you know, and that was, that was the, the people of color, that was our priority today. I'm tired, I'm tired of being on the back of this bus. Well, well, that's all right. You know something? I wouldn't mind being on the back of the bus along with Jesus with me. The Bible said in the book of um, Psalm 81, verse number um, 10 and 11, I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. So what had happened to, um, this is it's an analogy, this has happened to the church, and this is what had happened to the people of color also. They finally got the chance to ride from the, got from the back of the bus to the front of the bus, the word of God. But then the Bible says, when you get elevated and you, and you, and things are not oppressing you, you say, be careful when I bless you. He says, you got to be careful because what happens is when I begin to bless you, then you, people, you, you forget about God, glory to God. And when you are basically down and calling on God and, and people and things are pressing you and maybe you don't have as much money as you think you'd have, you know, folk who don't have a lot of money, they're some praying folks. They, 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 they learn how to pray. Oh, yeah, it just, they just naturally learn how to pray. And when um, they live in the areas, glory to God, where there's a lot of crime, high crime, they sure know how to pray. Oh, God, keep them bullets because they hear bullets, go, bullets going off every night. Okay, you're still trying to get to the front of the bus, hey man. You know, you're trying to get economically, but but while you're down there in an the area where, you know, it's not safe, where they got the dope pushers coming by, and when your kid walk out the door, you pray hard, oh God, protect my child, where they got. But then when you when you move into a nice neighborhood, you don't have to pray hard for God to protect your child because you're in a safe neighborhood. And when you get into a safe neighborhood and get a little bit of money in your pocket, where they got, and and you don't have to worry about the light bill, you don't have to pray over the light bill no more than what happened. You stop praying. Amen. But see, and so therefore, because you moved up to the front of the bus and you moved up um, to another neighborhood, then you don't have to pray no more because you don't have to pray that, that, that they don't break into your house no more because you got a burglar alarm protecting you. Glory to God. And what happens when God blesses people, then they forget about him. Glory to God. Now, just going back when folk was riding um, um, on the back of the bus and, and, and they couldn't drink water at certain fountains and they couldn't go to a certain place, they just, oh, oh, that's just terrible. They just treat me so wrong. And, and you pray, amen, because you, you better pray. Pray, glory to God, because you go out into the street because you didn't have no rights, so you pray, God protect me. But then when you got your rights and everything and they start treating you right, glory to God, we forget about God. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse um, all through that talks about how now, what I'm drawing a parallel, a parallel between even civil rights, I forget this civil rights, but also just in the narrative when the United States, when we got liberated from Britain, glory to God, and God began to bless us, then um, he said, when I bless you now, you need to get your Bible and look at that for Deuteronomy chapter 8. He, God warned the people, when I bless you, he said, you, you, were, you were doing without food a lot of times. You didn't have a lot of water. He said, but when I bless you with houses that you didn't build, when I bless you with wells you didn't do, when I bless you, he said, he said, take heed that you don't forget about me. God knows how we are. How, when we get blessed, a man called T.D. Jakes wrote a book one time entitled, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? You need to think about that. And really, Jesus warned the people in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, 10 and 4, 
uh, watch out because you think you can stand to be blessed. But what I'm trying to say, your blessing, that new house will exchange God. You stop praying and you become, instead of being the oppressed, you become the oppressor. You lose God. You get your house, but you lose God. You get you a better job, but you lose God. You get the ride to the front of the bus, but you did, but you done got off the gospel bus and you don't lost God. Hallelujah. Uh, you need to choose. And, and we need to keep our priorities in order because there is danger in being blessed. There's danger. It really is. Read Deuteronomy chapter 8. God warns you about being blessed. All right, prior to going off the air today, I want to remind you that um, you're, you're welcome to come to any of our services at the Greater Love International Church and Revival Center. We have a change in services. We have on Sundays at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m., and then Saturdays at um, 8 a.m. Come out. Saturday Bible class and all services are preceded by prayer. God bless. God bless you and I am Pastor Jackson here wanting to um, let you know that we have a free book offer that we want to give you. A book that I have written it is entitled Commitment Who Needs It and I felt like the body of Christ needs this book because sometimes people are not really committed like they should be and they don't really understand what commitment is all about but the Bible did say in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 27 Jesus speaking he said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor and thyself. No, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. There's no wavering, but it's he's Lord of all or not Lord at all. And that's what we as Christians must get in our mind, that when we're serving God, then it is something that we should do diligently. The Bible said in the book of Hebrew, chapter 6, verse number um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, it said this, that without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Note that word diligent. That alludes to the fact commitment is needed. The Bible also says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number um, 15, verse 58, Paul is saying this, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And as much as you know that your work and labor in God is not in vain. Steadfast, unmovable. God has to teach us how to be steadfast. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 8, though he were a son, talking about Jesus, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So we need to learn obedience. We need to learn the kind of God we're serving. We need to learn who God is. We need to learn that God wants commitment from us total, absolute, unwavering commitment. Just like when two people are standing in a marriage situation and they make a vow, keep your vows unto God. You need this book. Write me and I'll send it to you free and postpaid. God bless. Sounds of Revival was brought to you by Perry Jackson Ministries and Greater Love International Church and Revival Center. Worship Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Tuesday Bible class at 7.30 p.m and Saturday morning Bible class and communion at 8 a.m. Prayer precedes all services. For directions or to receive your free bi-monthly newsletter, call 317-796-0938 or email jackson-perry at att.net. To request today's program or sermon on CD or DVD, please send an offering of any amount to Perry Jackson Ministries, P.O. Box 26891, Indianapolis, Indiana 46226. Ask for the offer number on the screen.